Hey there! This year we wanted to create a helpful resource for your family or you as an individual to use to help keep centered and focused on the purpose of Advent in the midst of all the change that will make this year look different than past ones. You can watch these short videos with family, friends, or by yourself, but it would be helpful for you to have a Bible, pen, and paper handy. Each week we'll have some scripture, an activity for you to engage in, and some discussion questions for you to wrestle with. This week, we're focusing on hope, so let's get started. But this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. The Book of Lamentations was written during a time when God's people had lost everything. They were far from home, enduring hardships brought on by others, and suffering the consequences of their own rebellion against God. They'd hit rock bottom as a nation and were in desperate need of some hope. Over 2,500 years have passed since these verses were written, but we can still feel the same ways today, although we would definitely use different words to say it. We often feel like we've lost our way. We're enduring hardships of all sorts, some that aren't our fault. And we're suffering through the consequences of our individual and collective rebellion against God. It's easy to get weighed down by all that's going wrong in the world. We're all in some desperate need of hope. Enter Jesus. Jesus was born to bring us the kind of hope that lasts. No matter what we've done or what's been done to us, when we put our trust in Jesus, we receive God's steadfast love and endless mercy. No questions asked. Like the writer of Lamentations, when we wait expectantly for God's love and mercy, we find hope. So now we're gonna do something that might feel a little cheesy at first, but helps us to process what the promise of Jesus really means for us. Every year, children all over the world write letters to Santa. These letters almost always list ways the writer has been good, begging Santa to overlook anything bad, and no letter is complete without a wish list. As a child, you might have spent hours thinking about what you would put on your wish list for Santa, hoping and dreaming that you'd wake up Christmas morning to find your number one requested item under the Christmas tree. Thankfully, Jesus wants to hear what we're hoping for and dreaming about. The good news is that he's very real and even more powerful than Santa. Using the good, bad wish list formula for the letter to Santa, write a letter to Jesus. Here in a second, some instructions are gonna appear on the screen, and when they do, spend some time writing your letter to Jesus. We've given you a countdown timer, but if you need more time, feel free to pause the video.
All right, for this next section, we wanna give you some time and space to share and process what we've talked about and reflected on today. In a minute, some discussion questions are gonna appear on the screen. Uh, and if you're doing this with family or friends or a small group, you can discuss these together. Or if you're doing this by yourself, consider writing down the questions and your answers in a journal. We've given you a countdown timer, but if you need more time, feel free to pause the video.
As you enter this first week of Advent, may you not lose sight of the reason we celebrate. May the God of hope who reminds us, even in the darkness, that there is always the promise of light, help you to hold on to God's promises this week. The hope of Christ be with you in all that you say and do.